Hi, this is Jared Walton from PC Gamer. So after two years spent in Early Access, Ark Survival Evolved, the game that lets you ride and tame dinosaurs, has officially launched. I poked at the game a few times during the Early Access phase, and my impression was that the game was far too demanding for the quality of the graphics on display. But hey, it was Early Access, and presumably optimizations were yet to come. That excuse no longer holds sway, and with several paid expansions already available, I was really hoping performance would be improved. Let's just get this out of the way right here. It's not. Or at least it's not running as smoothly as something like the Destiny 2 beta. If you're running anything less than a high-end graphics card, be prepared to dial down the settings quite a bit. The Epic preset is punishing, even on the fastest current graphics cards. Thankfully, Arc has plenty of settings you can tweak, though the game starts to look quite ugly if you go too far. Also note that the presets by default include resolution scaling, which I'm not a fan of, so I've adjusted the scaling to 100% in all cases. Let's get into the benchmarks, and first up we have the normally tame 1080p medium, but yeah, this is just a catastrophe. Even our budget GPUs failed to clear this relatively low hurdle at 60 frames per second. The RX 560 can't even hit 30 frames per second consistently, while the 1050 Ti just barely makes it past that mark. Medium quality looks decent overall, and Arc is certainly playable at 30 to 40 frames per second, but if you're after smooth frame rates and 1080p medium quality, you're going to need closer to GTX 1060 to get there. Looking at the big picture, Arc proves to be too much for many slower graphics cards. Mainstream GPUs that would usually get 60 frames per second or more end up closer to 30, and older GPUs are going to really struggle. Stepping up to 1080p epic, the graphics cards continue dropping like flies. The only GPU to manage more than 60 frames per second is the GTX 1080 Ti, a $700 card that currently plays king of the hill in the graphics card market. For the mainstream cards shown in our real-time frame rate graphs, most are delivering 30 frames per second or more with periodic dicks below that mark. In the full rankings of current generation graphics cards, only half a dozen managed to break 30 frames per second. With a few adjustments, the RX Vega 56 and above can get to 60 frames per second and still look pretty good but very few gamers are going to be able to max out all of Arc's settings and still maintain playable frame rates. I go into more detail about the various settings and which ones help the most if you turn them down a notch in the full article on PCGamer.com, so be sure to check that out. Given what we've seen so far, 1440p Epic shouldn't be much of a surprise. Now even a GTX 1080 Ti is only getting 46 frames per second, and the Vega 64 and GTX 1080 only barely clear 30 frames per second. If you're running a 144Hz 1440p display, good luck on maxing out the refresh rate. The overall standings don't really change much, the frame rates just become lower. It's interesting that Arc's developers at one point were talking about a DX12 patch to improve performance, but that was put on indefinite hold over two years ago. Based on the way the game looks and how it currently runs, I don't think I'm going out on too much of a limb when I say that there are many optimization tasks Arc needs first before the devs start thinking about getting improvements via low-level APIs. Do we even need to look at 4K epic quality, the holy grail of gaming? You bet we do, because it's sort of funny to see a $700 GPU struggle along at 25 frames per second. The video in the background was recorded on the 1080 Ti, and even then you can still see the stuttering. If you were hoping multi-GPU would help in the form of SLI or Crossfire, I did see a decent boost to frame rates with GTX 1080 SLI, but unfortunately there was also some rendering errors. I didn't even bother testing most GPUs at 4K Epic for obvious reasons. Performance is around half of what you can get at 1440p Epic and 1440p was already struggling. So instead of spending more time on settings that no one is likely to run, let's see if we can get 4K to a playable result by dropping everything to minimum quality. Ah, there we go. Smooth sailing at 60 frames per second in 4K. And look at how beautiful the uh, game, yeah. So maybe it looks like crap. Let's not dwell on that too much. You want to run at 4K in minimum quality? You can certainly do so. And if you've got a faster graphics card, you might even be able to bump up a few settings a notch and still get reasonable performance. But if your goal is 30 frames per second or more, you're still going to need at least a GTX 1060 to get there. And for multiplayer, probably a GTX 1070 or a Vega 56 is a better starting point for 4K. I have two more areas that I want to quickly look at with Arc. First is CPU requirements, which end up being mostly a non-event. Arc is super heavy on the GPU side of things, but for your CPU, even a modest Core i3-7100 was able to handle the game. 
The testing at 1080p Epic doesn't really give the CPUs much of a chance to differentiate. All the CPUs use DDR4-3200 memory, and while Intel holds a clear lead up 1080p medium, for most PCs, you'll end up with a GPU bottleneck. The last and final area to check is notebook performance. Gaming notebooks have definitely closed the performance gap with gaming desktops over the past couple of years, though the gap isn't entirely gone just yet. There's not a whole lot to say here. The GPUs all land right where I'd expect. The difference in performance is larger on smaller notebooks, as clock speeds for both the GPUs and CPUs tend to be a bit lower there. Again, it's been two years of early access, even more, and I had really hoped to see some good performance optimizations for ARC. Unfortunately, as our review points out, ARC ends up with a lot of features and bloat in place of refining the core experience. But for anyone who has ever wanted to visit Jurassic Park, there's enough here to keep you occupied, particularly if you stay away from the official servers and play with the numerous mods. As for performance, ARC uses Unreal Engine 4 in either extremely taxing or extremely inefficient ways, or maybe a bit of both. We may yet see some improvements, but a better bet would be tweaking the settings to find a compromise between image fidelity and frame rates, or maybe come back in a couple years with faster hardware. Speaking of which, thanks to MSI for providing the notebooks, graphics cards, motherboards, and desktop PC for our testing. The main GPU results were all run on MSI's Aegis TI3 system, a high-end desktop with an overclocked i7-7700K, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte of RAID 0 solid-state storage. It normally comes with a pair of GTX 1080 cards, though of course we swap those out for the other GPUs during testing. We have additional charts and performance results in our full article on PCGamer.com, along with a review of the game if you're wondering if ARC is worth picking up. While performance requirements are clearly high, for many people it will be enough to know that you can go around punching trees and rocks, eating berries, and training dinosaurs. If you ever wanted to experience Jurassic Park yourself, that's about all ARC needed as a selling point. Thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments what game you'd like to see me benchmark next. We'll see you next time.